You know when you're trying to use your phone at night and even at the lowest brightness, the screen is still too bright? Well, what I did is I enabled a new shortcut where I can press the volume up and volume down key at the same time to quickly dim the screen even further. And then when I want to brighten up the screen again, I can press the buttons once more. How did I do this? Well, I jumped into the settings, went into the accessibility menu, hit extra dim, extra dim shortcut, and enabled the hold volume keys option. After I hit save, I can now hold down the volume rocker to instantly dim the screen no matter what app I'm on. I can even choose the intensity. If your phone doesn't have this shortcut, you can instead enable this extra dim tile found within the edit page of the quick settings and it works the same way. This next hidden setting is really insane because it lets you control your phone by just using your voice. Check it out. Okay, Google, start voice access. Open Instagram. Scroll down. Search Android. Tap Accounts. Tap Android. Two. Show Labels. Tap 23. So as you can see from that demo, I could pretty much do everything. I could open an app, navigate through it, tap anything, scroll, and even do a quick search just by using my voice. It comes in handy when your hands are busy. If you'd like to enable this, go into the settings, accessibility, voice access, and enable it. Within there, I would also allow the option to require verbs to make the commands a bit more natural. And you can also see a tutorial on how it works and all the commands you can ask it. From there, you can enable it by telling the Google Assistant to start voice access. And that's just a quick glimpse at the type of secrets we're unlocking within the system settings of your Android. I'm sure most of you rarely ever stop to review the settings in great detail, and I don't blame you. With hundreds of options and new ones added every year, it can get pretty exhausting to go through all of it. That's why I made this video, to show you some settings that can improve the battery, privacy, fix specific issues, or show off some that are just plain awesome. And keep in mind that depending on what phone you have, your system settings could differ from mine. I'm using the Google Pixel 7 Pro running Android 14, so some settings can be under different names, menus, or are just not supported. Still, I tried my best to only show off settings that almost every Android out there has, so feel free to drop a quick thumbs up for that. As some of you know, Android 14 brought a new and improved back gesture that lets you get a sneak peek of the previous page. That way you know exactly what you're returned to. Believe it or not, you can actually get this working on Android 13 too. Just go into the settings, about phone, scroll down to the bottom and tap the build number seven times to enable a secret menu called developer options. And then it'll ask you for your pin as well. Then go back, choose system, developer options, and scroll down until you see predicted back animations. Once you enable that, you'll get the predicted back feature within some apps like the system settings or even some Google apps. It's pretty neat. I'm sure some of you have the Google Home shortcut within your lock screen. Either you put it there or it's there by default. Either way, when you try to use it, some smart devices won't allow you to interact with them until you unlock your phone, which is pretty annoying. Luckily, if you're running Android 13, you can remove this lock by going into the settings, display, lock screen, and enabling use device controls. Again, the name for the setting could be different for some devices. If your screen keeps turning off too fast, the obvious solution will be to extend the screen timeout. But an even better solution is to enable this screen attention feature because it prevents the screen from turning off whenever you look at it. So even if you set your screen timeout to the lowest time frame, the countdown won't start until you look away. It works like a charm. And to find it, you just hop into the settings, go into display, hit screen timeout, and there it is at the bottom. Again, this option could be under a different name or menu depending on what phone you have. 
can't believe this next feature even exists, but on some devices, there's a feature within the digital well-being settings called Heads Up. And all it does is remind you to look up and focus on what's happening around you whenever you're walking. That way you don't accidentally run into anything. It can seem pretty unnecessary, but it could save your life, especially if you're living in the city. Now, if you're bilingual, you're going to love this next setting because it lets you change the language on a per app basis. To find it, go into the settings, system, languages, and app languages. Here you can change the language for each of your apps and it carries a ton of languages so the majority of you should be able to find your preferred ones. Alternatively, you can jump into the application's app info page and change its language that way. But remember that not every app is supported and this feature can only be found on devices running Android 13 or higher. The other option is to use a mod called Alltrans, which I reviewed in my last video on the best modded apps. Make sure to check it out in the cards after watching this video. Next is a setting that is really minor, but is still useful. Uh, try switching your ringer mode to vibrate. Do you see the vibration icon on the status bar? Well, if you don't, that's most likely because it was disabled by Google in Android 12. So with Android 13 or higher, you can enable it by going into the settings, sound and vibration, scrolling down to the bottom, and enabling the always show icon when in vibrate mode. Now you should see the vibration icon in your status bar. You're welcome. This next setting is only for devices running Android 13, so skip ahead if you don't have it. Basically, you can have your camera's LED lights start flashing anytime you receive a notification. Or you can have your entire screen flash a certain color as well. It's really useful if you're waiting for an important message. To find it, go into the settings, notifications, flash notifications, and you can enable it there. Now before I move on, as important as your smartphone is to you, your mental health is even more important. And with BetterHelp, the sponsor of this video, you can receive the best online therapy at an affordable cost. Back when I was in high school, I remember that I used to have an issue where I couldn't properly communicate with others because I was afraid of what they might think of me. So I would usually isolate myself and constantly turn to my smartphone for safety. And even though I was still making YouTube videos back then, I still wasn't confident enough to show my face or even bring up a bit of personality to my videos. So I decided to turn to therapy to see if they could help. And it actually changed my life because they gave me the proper tools to help me break out of my shell and develop better communication skills. I'm sure that if you're facing something similar or have other mental insecurities, BetterHelp can make it really easy to find the best therapist at an affordable price. On their website or via my link, betterhelp.com slash howtomen, which I'll link down below, you just answer a few questions and they'll match you up with a licensed therapist in a little as a few days. It's that easy. Plus you can reach them in various ways, including through messaging, phone call, or video chat at your own time. And the best part is that if you're not finding your therapist to be a good fit, you can easily switch to another one at any time with no additional costs or strings attached. That way you can really find someone who matches with what you're looking for. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. You can use my personalized link at the top of the description or visit betterhelp.com slash howtomen to sign up and get 10% off your first month. Now let's switch it over to some more privacy driven settings because you may not even know how vulnerable your device may be. First, most Androids are connected to a Google account and unsurprisingly, Google is most likely tracking your every move. From all the websites you visit, to the videos you watch, to where you've physically gone. To limit this or to stop it altogether, go into the settings, security and privacy, privacy, and then at the bottom, choose activity controls. Select your Google accounts, and then you can turn off web and app activity, location history, YouTube history, and personalized ads. Or if you don't want to go cold turkey, you can instead have any activity be auto-deleted after it becomes older than a few months. Another thing you should do is take a look at all the apps and services that have access to your Google account. What do I mean by that? Well, go back to the settings homepage, select Google, choose settings for Google apps, and tap connected apps. Here you'll find every third party app and service that can access your Google data because you most likely gave them access in the past and never remove them. So now you can. 
Afterward, go to the Google menu, tap on the three dots in the top right corner, choose Usage and Diagnostics, and turn off that big switch, because this setting allows your data to be sent to Google to help them improve their apps and devices. Pretty much a giant survey. Now, go back once more and choose Ads and delete your advertising ID to remove all the data that your apps have collected from you just to show you personalized ads. That's just the tip of the iceberg on all the privacy-driven settings you can tweak. Going over every single one would take way too long, so feel free to poke around the security and privacy menu. I'm sure you'll find even more ways to secure your data. I also made an entire video showing you how to de-Google your Android, so if you're interested in that, I'll leave that video in the cards. Now let's talk about some settings that we can change to quite possibly improve the battery life and performance. The first thing I do whenever I notice that my battery is draining is check to see what apps and processes are currently running in the background. To do this, I go into the settings, system, developer options, and running services. Here I can see everything that is currently running on my phone and how much RAM that service is using. If I want to stop one, I can just tap on it and hit stop. It's that easy. Don't worry, it won't let you stop system services that the OS requires to run, so it's completely safe. It's also a great way to learn about what apps are constantly running without you even knowing it, and if you don't really need them, you can just uninstall them. Another huge battery drainer is mobile data, especially if it's constantly trying to find a signal in a dead zone. Not only will your battery drain, but your phone will also become really hot and even start to lag. In those times, I would just enable the airplane mode until you're sure you're in an area with coverage, but believe it or not, your mobile data may still be active even if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network. And the reason this is enabled is simply to make network switching a lot faster, saving you an extra second or two. So to stop your mobile data from being active while you're also connected to Wi-Fi, just go into the developer options and scroll down until you see mobile data always active. Turn that off and you're good to go. And yes, you can still receive text messages and phone calls while being connected to the Wi-Fi. The same thing goes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Apps and services may be allowed to constantly scan in the background to improve location-based features. But unsurprisingly, it can squeeze your battery a bit. So within the settings, go to Location, Location Services, and you can turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning right then and there. Some devices also allow you to have virtual memory, but unless your phone has 6GB of RAM or less, you most likely shouldn't enable it. And even if you don't, some OEMs like Samsung have it enabled by default without you even knowing it. Now why should you disable this? Well, even though it seems like a positive feature on the surface, like letting you keep more apps open in the background, since it's grabbing the virtual memory from your store space, it's still not good for your phone, because what they're not telling you is that virtual RAM is way slower than real physical RAM. And when you keep offloading processes onto this virtual memory, your phone can eventually start to slow down and quite possibly even drain the battery if you use it long enough. Plus, since you're frequently writing to the storage space, this can cause wear and tear to the storage, which sure could take years, but you're still shortening the storage's lifespan. And your phone won't even use this virtual memory until you actually fill up your entire physical RAM space. So until that bar fills up, the virtual memory won't be used. So there's a lot of downsides to it. Again, it only makes sense to enable it when your device has less than six gigabytes of RAM and you're constantly doing aggressive stuff that peaks the physical memory like multitasking, video editing, etc. On Samsung, you can find it by going to the settings, device care, memory, RAM plus, and there you can turn it off. It'll make you restart your phone, but once you do, you're all good. On other devices like OnePlus or Oppo, it's under a different name, but you can search up RAM to find it. Uh, but it's most likely already disabled by default on those devices. Now I wanted to show you some tricks that can fix some issues that you may run into in the future or are currently experiencing. The first is fixing frequent network issues. If your phone constantly gets signal drops, Bluetooth glitches, drop calls, messages not sending, or even Wi-Fi connectivity issues, here's what you can do. You can try rebooting your phone, and if that doesn't work, you can reset your phone's network settings. This means it'll remove all the saved Wi-Fi networks, save Bluetooth profiles, restore the mobile network settings, and delete any saved VPN configurations. 
And no, it won't touch any of your apps, media content, messages, or personal files. To do this, go to the settings, system, reset options, and there you should see the option to reset the networks. On Android 14, they even separated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi from mobile networks so that you can get even more specific on what you like to reset. So that's nice. If you're having problems with your adaptive brightness, meaning that it makes your screen too bright in a dark room, or becomes too dim when you're outside, then the only solution is to reset it within the settings. So to do this, go to apps, tap see all apps, look for device health services, tap storage and cache, clear storage, and then hit reset adaptive brightness. From here, the device will learn your lighting habits all over again and hopefully do a better job of getting it right this time. And finally, for those with a Samsung device, there's actually a way to diagnose the entire device, including testing all the hardware components to ensure that everything is working properly. To find this, you need to open the Samsung Members app, go to the Support tab, tap on Phone Diagnostics, and then you can test all the hardware to see if everything is working properly and if any actions need to be taken. Anyways, that's everything you should change within the Android system settings. Click this video right here to see all the different mods you can install, even on non-rooted phones, to improve your smartphone experience. Thanks for watching till the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!